So I'll talk about the open week. You know, and, and I mentioned yesterday, most of you guys were there, uh, really having a defined objective for every player and for every unit. And it's so important that these guys learn how to have a purpose uh, every day. And I told them everything happens before it happens. Uh, that you have a goal, you know what the challenges are to get reach that goal, and then you're prepared to do certain things to overcome those challenges. And so if we can all stay focused on defining a purpose for this week, uh, then we'll come out of it a lot better football team. And your offensive line seems to be playing really well right now, giving up mm -hmm. really any sacks and you're running the ball really well. What's the key there? I think uh, it's a lot of things. It's uh, size and talent. Uh, so they're talented guys. They have a lot of experience um, as a unit. They have a lot of good chemistry uh, and just the physical maturity that, that you've seen over the last two years. So it's really everything kind of coming together and it's really what your goal is for every position. Um, and that, you know, that was a group that was kind of beat up for a couple of years. They were beat up last year uh, publicly for our performance. So uh, just really a focus group uh, committed group and talented group. Yeah, how much did you guys emphasize tackling today? Like that was yeah, I mean, that's absolutely. Uh, you know, and open week's always a time to go reevaluate your fundamentals and what you're not doing as good as, as well as you need to. And of course, the, the tackling and the open field tackling and the space tackling uh, is a real major uh, concern uh, where we need to make some significant improvement. How healthy is this team right now that you're roughly halfway through the season and how physical can these guys be during practice this week? Uh, I think they're fine. Um, how physical they are is going to be uh, up to what their mindset is and how physical they want to be. Uh, so we'll have a chance to recover later in the week. So we're really looking for recovery later, but right now we're hitting and, and we're moving on. Marcus Jackson got a lot of playing time at mm -hmm. Georgia. What is he doing well to, to be in there and deserve that? Well, he's uh, practicing well. He's playing well. He's, he's playing a lot of consistency, and he's got a lot of power. I mean, he really is playing physical football, and we're playing seven linemen right now. You know, Alex had about 20 snaps, uh, 15 snaps. Marcus had about 20-something snaps. So we're playing seven guys. The idea of having each player kind of set a couple goals for this off week, where did that idea, is that something you had done in the past with previous staffs or what was It's just something I've always done, even as an assistant, you know, because you can't really accomplish anything if you don't have a purpose. If you just go practice without an objective, and, you know, during game week, your purpose is you're learning this game plan and you're working the plan to go, and whether it's red area or third down, you're really focused on what we're working on. Well, when you go out there, uh, in an open date, it's really easy just to say, oh, how long is this practice going to be? And you just get through and you don't really accomplish anything. And you get worse when you do that. So just trying to be really focused on uh, self-improvement. Uh, it's the only way you're going to. And, and you know what? The practices don't go. They're not as bad when you're focused on something like that. Back on the running game there, how, how much of that is also Rajon Neal sort of coming into his own? Well, yeah, you, you know, you can't have a good running game with a back not running the ball well. And I think the last couple of weeks, he's, he's probably broken more tackles and had more yards after contact than he had uh, in any of those earlier games. So that's certainly a part of it. And uh, we still got to get Devon and Marlin and Q and those guys going too, because we need them all. When Ray John's as versatile as he is, though, is it, is it hard to go away from him when he seems to be getting into that kind of group? Yeah. He catches it well out of yeah. The and uh, we played him a lot, but it was about the right number of snaps. I think he had about 50, 50 or so snaps. Touched it about 20 times, I think. Um, so that's good. I mean, that's a that's a heavy workload right there. But that's 20 less snaps than what he was what he got in the Florida game. And 20 snaps is a lot. What's the attitude like in practice this week compared to right after the Florida game? He's such a more disappointed more often than so. Um, I don't really see much difference, you know. I mean, we were disappointed in the Florida game. Um, and there was a real focus to improve, and that's how it is right now. Coach, on Saturday, you said after the first look, it seemed like most of the big runs came against the base. It wasn't like you know, blitzing guys or had you know, left open holes. Did that they kind of hold up after mm -hmm. the study? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, I'll, you line up a little bit wrong. You don't play physical football, and then you don't strain to the football from the back end. So uh, it's a 
combination of uh, bad ball. I mean, when a team, when you have a run that long, it's 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 usually a bunch of bad ball. I mean, no way to really un explain it. Are you getting as much production out of Kurt Majin as you thought you would to this point in the season, or is that toe still limiting what he can do? The toe limits him, but that's really not the reason. He he has a lot of he he shows a lot of flashes where he's making good plays, but I think. Kurt's biggest issue, I believe, is he just hadn't played a lot. I mean, you know, it's a new position for him on the line. You know, he's playing that Sam on the line. And so all the play recognition, you'll see him early in the game screw it up, and then they run the same play later in the game, plays it beautifully. And so his lack of experience is probably the biggest thing. And, and I think, you know, he missed spring practice. We, we can't minimize that. I mean, he had 15 practices where everybody was working that – new defense and new positions and all that and he missed every one of them uh, and that hurt him you know coming into fall camp and then he's been dinged up in, with his toes so he's missing practice and it just he needs to play he needs to play his ability to learn in game like that like you were referencing how, what does that maybe That's, say about his yeah it's what good players do you know they, they learn how to survive and they they start making adjustments throughout the game they come to the sideline you played it wrong this is how you got to play that now. Next time they run it, boom, plays it perfectly. And you can teach it on the chalkboard, and you can run it against scout team, but there's no better way to improve as a player than to go out there and play. You've talked about leadership showing up once adversity strikes. Are you seeing what you want to see mm -hmm. in that regard? Yeah, I think it's been really good. We had not had any problems. You know, there's been no real negativity, really in any game. Neg no negativity, no point finger pointing, no complaining. That's not the issue. Um, we just got to go learn to execute in crunch time. Derek, how valuable is the production you're getting out of Zach Rogers? Extremely. Um, you know, uh, Georgia's whole plan was, you know, bracketing our big guys out wide, and um, which is understandable. And when they do that, guys like Zach and Mike Rivera and Rajon Neal got to make plays, and they did. They, they continue to. Your game wasn't the only game that didn't have an SEC type score last week. I mean, did, are the offenses just that much better this year in the conference than they've been in the past? Your defense is down a little, or what do you think explains the scores? Um, I don't know. I think it's a trend we've been seeing the last few years um, more and more. You know, offenses are doing a lot, tempo's moving, um, the rules help them out a little bit, you know. So, I don't know. Quarterbacks are playing good. I think in this league, you're seeing a lot of good quarterback play, which is generally an indicator of scoring points. I mean, you look at Georgia's guys playing great, Florida's guys playing great, Alabama's guys playing great, um, South Carolina's guys, you know, doing what he needs to do. Quarterbacks are playing good. Derek Tiny's a guy who had a, what's considered to be a first round pick over the top of him most of the day Saturday and Jarvis Jones. How would you assess how Tiny did? Yeah, he did a good job. The whole offensive line did. You know, did a really good job. So they they had they brought a lot of different games, you know, had a lot of runs. Did a nice job. Gotta keep going. Saturday, Florida, probably going to switch to Florida. Let's still be up for competition the next couple weeks. Yeah, I mean, nobody's really said I'm the guy. But, you know, I mean, the one thing that's interesting, and, you know, and I made this comment too, I mean, we're 8 for 10 on field goals, knock on wood, and there's not many coaches in college football that wouldn't take that. I mean, I think we're third in the league in field goals. Um, the problem is we missed three PATs, and that's what just leads to the we're the worst kickers of all time, you know. And and you know, both are true. Right. We can't miss three PATs because it's going to incite fear uh, by everybody, including my kids, you know. But then we look and we're eight for ten, and after five games in field goals, you go, you know what? It's pretty good, eighty percent. I mean, isn't that true? We never say that, though. We just say we missed three PATs. But you're right. You can't miss three PATs because people are going to just say you missed three, three PATs. I don't care what you did. How are Rivera and Bartholomew, how do they play? 
Well, Mike's, Mike's they're playing really consistently. You know, uh, Ben probably didn't have one of his better ones, uh, but they both played consistent ball. Both got to really uh, work on the run block. You know, that's that's the big thing is uh, we're, try, we're trying to get to the edge a little bit, and we lost the edge a couple of times on some of those outside runs that we can do a little bit better. Is that been a little bit of a surprise to you that they haven't been as consistent in run block or did you expect some of the um, Well, it usually depends on who we play, you know. It's when you play teams like Florida and Georgia, that's always, you know, the tight. I've been going through this my whole career at tight end. Um, you know, because you got to block like an old lineman and run routes like a receiver. And then when they put a big old guy on the other side, you know, you're sitting there at 240 and they're over there at 275, 280. And they're coming hard and they got a little twitch. It's tough. Uh, but then we didn't block the Sams either very well. So. Tight end's a tough spot. Be good at everything. But the good ones, they are. All right, thank you. Okay. Thank you.